Hey guys, here's a video I've been wanting to do for a while, and it might be one of the most important videos on YouTube for people trying to prolong the longevity of whatever vehicle they have, truck, car, SUV, doesn't matter. But this is something I've thought about for a while and why I've had reservation about some of the oil change intervals these manufacturers recommend. I'm gonna do a reaction today on a video from the Motor Oil Geek because this is phenomenal. Let's do this. <laughs> okay, he's setting this right off the bat. Why OEM oil change intervals kill engines? You know this is going to be good because he's going to press some buttons. Can you guys think of a better timing right now to talk about this? The situation that's happened with the General Motors L87 6.2 liter engine recall has brought a highlight to oil, oil contamination, oil viscosity, weights, everything. And maybe some of these issues we're seeing with engines is actually maybe due to some of the wrong oil requirements that have been recommended by manufacturers. So this is going to impact your pushrod, V8s, all your variable valve timing, the solenoids that drive the variable valve timing, the solenoids for turbos, VGT actuators, oil pumps, everything. So I want to highlight something on this. So I've heard from powertrain manufacturers, automotive companies, that one of the risks to changing your oil more often. As soon as you open the cartridge, say it's a, a cartridge design where the oil filter is on the top or on the bottom, you potentially increase the chance of contamination getting into your engine because you've opened the oil. The problem is, and he's gonna highlight this in the video, is that the oil filters typically don't have enough filtration down to the correct micron level. And it's not due to them using the wrong filter material. Because if you put too tight of a filter mi uh, micron level, it would reduce the flow rate. So it's, it's give and take. And he talks about this. Think about your environment that you use your vehicle in. Are you in a dusty environment? Do you live on a dirt road? Do you go off road very often? Are you in an environment that maybe is cold out and has a lot of salinity in the air? I've seen this issue in the past where you get more salt in the air in wintertime, especially in northern climates like mine, and it will actually show up in your engine. Also, he's not going to talk about this in this video, but it's good to be changing your air filter because that's another area where contamination can get in your engine. Highly recommend at that point doing whatever it says at the manual at a minimum for changing your air filter if not every single year or more often based on your use case. For me and how we use our trucks, I don't follow the manual at all. I'm doing it not even a quarter as often. And I'm going to, or if it's a reusable filter, cleaning it more often. But air filter is just as important. Okay, guys. So this is going to get more fun. Uh, myself and Car Guy Online, we're going to be doing a video comparison where he's actually in the midst of this right now with his hurricane engine, where he has done an oil change at 500 miles. I'm actually going to be doing mine right around 3,000 miles. Different engines, both hurricanes, standard output versus high output, little bit different use case, uh, but we're going to compare the results once these are done to add to this. And it'll be really fun to look at 500 miles of engine use versus 3,000. And my 3,000 should be a lot harder because I've towed quite a bit and i am pushed it a little bit more probably than he has. So we are going to do this and see how this correlates to this video. Okay, I want to stop on this. So I always used to, used to hear this wives' tale of engine braking, and I used to think this is kind of a gimmick. Um, I can tell you right now from my experience in my 2025 Ram 1500 RHO with the high output Hurricane engine, I believe there was a break in uh, to this engine for a few reasons. Number one, um, this was the most obvious. I noticed a big difference from when it was new to about 5,000 miles. Uh, the fuel economy improved. Then I noticed again, once I got higher at near 10,000, at that about 10,000, 11,000 miles on the engine, I noticed the fuel economy went up even more. And it was literally at that point from new to then was almost a 10% improvement. I'm not saying everyone's going to see this, but I'm going to tell you, I noticed it specifically. And I noticed it a big difference with towing because my range improved and I had more range. I didn't change a trailer, time of the year, nothing. Didn't change the fuel, buying from the same place. So this break-in thing, especially on some of these new engines that are very tight for emissions, 
It's going to take a little bit longer to break these in. He says, there's a whole other video series you should watch about this. He talks about why does your oil filter not catch your, capture all of the contaminants through the engine? It could be because of where the oil filter is located. Um, the, the whole idea is these, these oil filter systems and filtration systems are designed that it's going to cycle the oil over in the engine so many times every so often. And it's not like it's a complete funnel where everything is forced through that. And they do this for a lot of reasons, but basically they're trying to manage back pressure, pressure in the oil system and keep a flow going, especially if you get low oil. There, there's lots of reasons for this, but this is more reason why the extended interval doesn't make sense for most people. I think he's spot on in this. And honestly, I'm kind of bummed at myself. I wish I would have seen this video about a month ago because I probably would have followed the exact same path, 500 miles due to my first oil change. Uh, Car guy online is taking his approach and I think it's phenomenal. Now, some people could say this is overkill, makes no sense. I totally get it. Some people might say you're wasting good oil. These trucks, these SUVs, these cars are super expensive. You want to make them last. What's an extra 30 bucks in oil if this helps you have issues down the road? I can tell you this. The people I know with 6.2 liter V8s for General Motors right now that are not having issues, coincidentally enough, do not follow the General Motors engine oil interval of 7, 8,000, 10,000 miles. These guys did literally, I've got a friend, he's got over 20,000 miles on his Escalade with this motor and 18,000 of them is towing. He changed his first oil at about a thousand miles. Guess what? Not one issue. I think he's got over 30,000 miles or something now on his 6.2 liter, no problem. So I think there's something really important about this engine oil break in, and maybe this will save us all a lot of headaches down the road if we follow this a little bit more. Okay, I wanna add a little context. What is he talking about? Surface texture, connecting rods, journal, needle bearings, cams, rollers, bearings in your turbos. There's so many different interfaces inside of all these new modern engines. They're not, most of these engines anymore, besides a few, are not just a super basic engine. They're not like a Briggs and Stratton, like your lawnmower. These things got valve solenoids on your valve timing. Uh, some of these engines even have variable compression ratio. You've got multiple cams going. You've got multiple valves going. You've also got solenoids for the valves and then add in the complexity of the EcoBoost, the Turbo Max, the Force Max, the Hurricane. Now you add in turbos and the amount of uh, wear locations there inside of the turbo that is putting additional stresses. Man, and the timing of this viscosity, think about the situation with General Motors. Zero W20 is fine, right? That's what we're told. These engines come from the factory, zero W20. Then L87 engine recall happens. And if you pass the, the scope test, they switch you to zero W40. And all of a sudden, zero W40 is fine. And then you got people like me and Car Guy Online where we're thinking you got these brand new Hurricane engines. The standard output engine comes with zero W20. The high output engine comes with zero W40. But we're told to run the spec per the manufacturer and it will last. That's what we were also told in 2020 when people bought 6.2 liter V8s, but now the spec has changed. So ask yourself this, what oil viscosity you should be running in a standard output hurricane engine? Well, the engineers told you to run 0W20 in the standard output and 0W40 in the high output. I question it because if I had a standard output based on what we've seen with the General Motors 6.2 liter, I'd run 0W40. Why? What's the downside? And I'd be curious to get your guys' comments. What would you do? Will you risk your warranty if you run a 0W40 in a standard output hurricane engine when the manufacturer is telling you to run 0W20? What if the people with General Motors would have ran 0W40 instead of 0W20 in these 6.2 liters? How big of a difference would that have had on this engine recall? This is a really, really big deal. I want to focus on this a little bit more than what he will on this point. We've all been told by certain oil brands in the last 20 years, you can run this oil and you'll extend your interval. Well, the oil doesn't necessarily break down, but the contaminants increase in the oil and those contaminants in the oil are what damage your engine. So technically these increased uh, oil change intervals, even some cases longer than what the manufacturer, because you know, you're running this premium oil was 
not good for your engine. And even more so, specific to diesel, specific to anything that has a high pressure fuel system, which is going to be diesel engines. It's going to be the Hurricane engine. It's going to be any of the GM. Pretty much every GM engine has a high pressure fuel system. The every single Ford engine, yeah, Power Boost. EcoBoost, even the Coyote is running a high pressure fuel system. If you run extended oil intervals with a direct injection fuel system, you're going to have a higher chance of fuel dilution getting into your oil. Fuel in your oil is not a good thing. It reduces the uh, viscosity and increases the wear properties. My takeaway, man, this is a great video and I hope more people watch his channel. There is so much data to geek out on. This channel's awesome. I definitely recommend you guys checking it out if you want to go down the rabbit hole on oil and the impact. And the timing of this couldn't be better. Given the situation we've seen with General Motors, I think the importance is very important, especially uh, I look at where I'm at right now in northern climates. It's cold out right now. Having the right oil, good oil, minimum contaminants, having good oil pressure in cold weather, minimum contamination oil, big deal. I wish I would have seen this, honestly, uh, about two months ago, because as soon as I got my RHO, I would have probably changed the oil at 500 miles, did it again at 1,000 miles, then did it at 3,000 miles, 5,000, and then that would probably be and maybe at the 10,000 point. So by 10,000 miles, I would have had four or five oil changes. The manufacturer, 10,000. Wild. Is it a little extra effort? Yes. If you're a DIY person, you can do this stuff at home. It's not that big of a deal. And I'm going to show you guys shortly how easy it is to do an oil change on this Hurricane engine. Yep, I know. I hear you guys. There's no dipstick. It almost makes it easier because you don't even really have to look at a dipstick. You just put seven quarts of oil or whatever the recommendation is, if it's standard output or high output. Go inside, look at the oil level. Good to go. I, after watching this video, I don't think I'll ever go. If the manufacturer says 10,000 miles, even at the 10,000 mile mark, if it says the oil still 50%, I'll never do it again because those wear oil indicators don't understand a lot of the stuff that's going on in the environments you ride in, the insides of the engine, what's the case of it. I won't probably ever go beyond 5,000 miles, even if it says you can do 10,000. It's funny, he's showing Penn's oil oil in this video. Um, I actually run that oil. I do some AMS oil. I, I basically do a lot of different oils depending on what the vehicle is. And I actually noticed one of the Mopar oils recommended, I think actually is a Penn's oil full synthetic, but we're going to be doing a video soon. Car guy online and myself, we're going to compare 500 mile oil change, his black uh, stone analysis versus mine at around 3000 miles. And we're going to compare how are these engines breaking in? And I've got data to compare to our last oil change we did on the hurricane, the 25 RHO, we'll compare that data. And then we're going to do it again. Him and I are going to put this all together. We're going to geek out on this to help you guys. I hope it's helpful for you guys because really at the end of the day, these are super, super expensive investments. And if you're planning to keep this vehicle outside of warranty, you want these things to last. I've said things you can do before to making these engines last. Maintenance is a big deal. Letting your engine warm up. And these turbo engines, when you do a long road trip, let it cool down. Let this thing sit for a minute or so just to kind of cool down. Let the oils run through the turbos and the antifreeze and everything and just let it chill out. Good filters. I'm a big fan of the OEM filters because you know it meets their specs, but there's a lot of other good oil uh, filters to use and air filters to use as well. Hey, guys, I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, you know, leave your comments down below. Maybe we'll do more reactions in the future. Thanks for watching.